Welcome back to Nick and Afraid Fabrication with me, Sam, your best friend. Anyways, um, we need to get this exit cage welded up and then cleaned off and painted. And then we can uh, take care of some stuff on the Jeep itself. And once that's all done, we're going to pick the cage up, we're going to put back on the Jeep, weld the uh, the cage to the Jeep in a couple different spots and then add some bracing and that'll be that, man. Let's do it. It's uh, been a couple days, um, did a bunch of welding, <clears throat> grinding, stuff like that. Uh, a couple things I didn't show you, I just needed to get stuff done. Whoops, that was a grinder that just fell. Um, Could have used those YJ Bill grinder holders, but uh, anyways. Uh, all right, so a couple um, supports that I cut and welded in. These came from my buddy, um, at YJ Bill on Instagram. He's got a CNC table, or excuse me, a plasma table, and he's been cutting like a madman, just sending me stuff to try out. Uh, these are supposed to be for a 45, and I made them work, which I think it's pretty sweet. Just the uh, Tennessee flag. But yeah, so kind of welded everything up, capped some stuff off. Oh yeah, he sent me these two. Really digging this, but um, just some two caps and he can probably cut you um, with a bevel on it so it sits in the open tube. You just gotta let him know what size tube you're using, thickness. Um, but really nice, they welded in real nice. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, added these bars. <laughs> I had a guy a comment on Instagram that I should be running you know, the X um, through, and it's not that it didn't go through my mind, it just, you don't have to do that. Um, but anyways, I just was thinking about the possibility of the top folding in on a real good flop because there's no direct upright support that I have on it. Um, so I couldn't sleep well with that. Uh, so what I did was I did a triangle like the front, meaning that if it hits the top, right, the energy is being displaced through these bars. And then I have these bars going straight to the frame, which will, um, accept that energy and push it into the frame and those kind of mount up over here so i think this design will be just fine um and i'm out of breath because it just worked out not because i'm fat anyways um so the x yeah i just it wasn't really going to work it was going to be a lot of work if, if if that's what i was going to do so didn't do that um but moving on um i was thinking about you know i already had cleaned off all the steel and uh it's still kind of dirty. So what I need to do at this point is I'm gonna take the same stripper discs I've been using and just go over this thing again real quick. Uh, so it all looks like this, which is a little bit cleaner. Shouldn't take too long. Then I'll clean it off with like a brake cleaner or whatever. And uh, we're gonna start painting this thing, get it done. So let's do it.
I've gotten the cage as uh, good as I feel I want to get it. Um, it's a roll cage, so it's going to get bashed up and jacked up, and I'm bound to miss the spot with spray paint. Um, so I'm, I'm doing what I think is necessary. Um, but basically, attacked the welds with a wire wheel and, you know, took off any of the mill scale that I could find. There wasn't much on it because I had already stripped it. And then I just wiped the crap out of it with acetone. Um, that's where we're going to leave it uh, before we paint it. And now I got this whole box of steel it gray. Um, I think a lot of people think it's just overpriced spray paint. And maybe it kind of is, but... They also, most people just don't let it, um, they don't, they don't understand that you have to let it cure for like a week, uh, for it to harden up. And then you spray paint it and 24 hours later, um, they go to whatever, use it on something or it gets dragged on something and it scratches and they're like, well, this is just spray paint. And it's like, Hey dipshit, you got to let it cure for a week. Um, like actually any spray paint <laughs> or any paint needs to cure, even powder coat. If, you've ever picked up a, something that got powder coated uh, within 24 hours, it'll scratch easy. So, yep, we're gonna do uh, steal it and uh, that's it. Start spraying the crap out of it. No rhyme or rhythm. I'm pretty filthy. Um, someone will probably say it. No, I'm not wearing a respirator. Yeah, I know I should. <clears throat> I'm sure I'll regret that one day, but um, for now I don't. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's never gonna show up well on the camera, but that's um, two coats. Um, like I said, it's the steel of gray. And there's probably most definitely some spots I didn't even hit. <laughs> it's a lot of, there's a lot of tubing there, but uh, I still got a third of a case left. So <clears throat> I'll be able to touch it up and whatnot. And for today I'm done. So I'll let that uh, cure for a good couple of days. Probably go through it tomorrow and see if there's any raw spots, hit those. But yeah, we'll let it cure. Got to work on some things on the Jeep. And then uh, hopefully this week coming up, we will pick it back up, put it on top of the Jeep and weld it in. All right, so the only part I'm really gonna film of the stuff I need to get done on the Jeep before the cage goes on is gonna be these <clears throat> moto built um, tail light things. Um, they didn't come with instructions. I don't know if they ever did originally, but I got these uh, from a buddy, you know, Got some hardware to go with it, but um, for the sake of time and whatever, this is all going to show because I figure if somebody might get something out of this, but I'll show you how I'm going to install them or what I've come up with in my head. Um, and yeah, so all that's really important to me is that they are symmetrical side to side um, and they don't sit flush currently because if you look closely um, where the old taillights used to screw in, it's an elevated. Uh, so it's a bump out, bump out, and this is also going to be in the way of the light. So what I'll do here, or start off here, um, cutting minimally is cut around that, you know, here, come up here, something like that, right? We want to get that bump out, that 
uh, out of there so we can flush mount this. Then we're gonna find a distance, how high we want it in relation to this bar. <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna do this side first because I have this little plastic piece. So basically I'm gonna butt it up against there and that will be the distance. I'll use the distance um, from here to here to match up the other side, right? So I'll just measure uh, down and over and that will be, should be pretty dang close. And that'll be that. I'm gonna have to drill some holes. It's just uh, came with some <coughs> generic stainless hardware. And that'll be that, let's do it. So, um, shift a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, anyways. So I trimmed out whatever needed to be trimmed out. Oh, God. And uh, everything just fell apart. It's kind of what it looks like. I'll smooth it all out, and then I'll hit it with that. Um, I have, you know, whatever color magic anvil paint just to try to seal it up a little bit. But uh, once you do that... Paint these suckers up, which I think I'm going to go with steel grade as well. Um, you bolt them up, just a through bolt and a nut on the backside. And then um, you just get like a four inch trailer light. Moto Belt sells some on theirs. I don't know if I like theirs, but any four inch light with like a rubber grommet. The grommet goes in first and the light squeezes into it. Um, and that's it. There, I think there's some kind of resistor you need to wire in, but yep. So now I'm going to finish up everything else. All right, we're back. And we got the Jeep outside sitting basically on bumps almost. Looks pretty rad like that though. Um, so things I didn't show you is after I painted the cage, um, I just don't have time to show you everything, but um, I DA sanded the armor, which looks better than uh, polished up, I think. And I DA sanded that bottom plate. I added in, <clears throat> we had these bars that come up to, from the frame to the, uh, what do you call it, harness bar. I added in these bars from Shock Towers um, and gussets for strength. Um, what else did I do? Did some paint, oh, I finished these up. They look sweet. I need taillights, but not worried about it right now. Um, painted up some stuff on the inside. I did a really shitty job really but um starting to convert everything to gray I think it looks good got that bounded up this whole thing um it's a little loose and i was looking at it and it's because the plate that i got this plate off of ebay and it's made out of eighth inch uh steel and really it needs to be like three sixteenths because that's where that play is coming from anyway. It's not awful and it's still on there, but it does bother me. I contacted the company and they said they used to make them out of 316s, but it was so tight that sometimes it wouldn't go in, snap in. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. Eventually I'll do something because it's gonna drive me crazy. Um, but yeah, right now we have this thing sitting uh, pretty much as low as possible. That one's literally on bump because um, we're gonna hook the cage back up to the lift, hoofed in the air and try to get it in, hopefully by myself. Uh, we might even drop the tires down to zero, gain a couple inches there. And uh, yeah, let's do that.
Well, it's on. Uh, I managed to do it myself for the most part. Well, I did it all myself, but it's not fully on just yet. It's sitting, uh, it's got its weight on the, the sliders, but <clears throat> an issue that I ran into, and this is something that happened, I think, before I pulled it off, but, and it's not surprising at all, um, but like these, the angle that these are at, because of the weld, my guess, they kind of want to suck back in this way. So what they're doing, they're touching right now the bottom supports, but they're not allowing the whole cage to move forward about, I don't know, half an inch or something. You can see down here, um, it needs to go forward just a little bit. That's the old weld. I kept the old weld so I knew where it was. So I'd say half inch. Um, it's not a huge problem. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the Jeep out um, pull my truck out. It's a good, uh, attachment point. And then I'll pull the front, I'll pull the Jeep up to the truck and attach a, uh, just one of these straps to the front of the cage and put the Jeep in gear and try to pull the cage forward and stretch the rear a little bit, stretch those little arms. And when I have it where I want it, I will tack it in place here and, you know, all up here and then release it and take care of the rear. But yeah, it's, uh, it's really freaking exciting to see this, this making it all worth it. <clears throat> so still a lot of work to do. Let's get back to it. All right, so that's not really working. I was thinking about the uh, the truck deal, but if I have it out there, I won't be able to uh, weld it. So I tried hooking it to the lift, and all that's happening is it's uh, pulling so hard that it's this is just slipping up and then over to here. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, get this where I want it, these supports, and I'm gonna tack them or heavy tack them or just fucking send it and weld them in and then when I pull on it it can't go nowhere so theoretically it should stretch it out and uh, put us where we want to be. All right, so um, I got it kind of figured out. I didn't show you a bunch just because it got really complicated. Um, there was shrinkage in the cage or warpage, whatever you want to call it. Hey, baby girl. Hi. Yeah. Doing video. Doing video. Okay. Um, and basically what I had to do was I pulled it into the bay. I hooked the door bars to the lift on both sides with a strap and started pulling, you know, pulling each side out a little bit, you know, maybe been off a quarter of an inch. And then I pulled from the V bar to the stinger to pull the whole cage forward and stretch out those bars I was showing you in the back. And that seemed to have worked. So the only thing I've got, I don't know, 90% of this thing welded in, uh, other than some of the supports I'm going to add later. But, um, I do want to try to pick up on these a little bit. So we're probably going to have to turn this thing around and jack up on it. Yeah. There's a possibility they're going to lift. There's a possibility they're just going to take the whole vehicle with it. So if that's the case, if it, the whole vehicle goes, then that's probably where they're staying. We'll just weld them in. Simple as that. Let's take a look at it.
All right, well, that's it. That's where she's gonna stay, I guess. Um, it's not where I had intended it. It's off by about an inch, uh, sitting about an inch lower. And that's gonna have to be okay, I guess. Thinking about um, how I could stretch it. Maybe I'll put, put some thought into that. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some thought into that because I don't, I don't wanna just leave it like that. If I don't have to, I'll get back to you. All right, so this is what I've come up with. It might work, it might kill me, I don't know. But I've taken one of those same uh, tie straps and <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm tired of shit. I've wrapped it around the jack and around the subframe uh, that I built, and the theory being that it will uh, stop the movement of the body, and all I'm doing is splitting or pushing apart the, um, God damn it. the uh, cage. Anyways, let's see if it works or kills me. Bye. Well, it worked for the most part. Um, as you can see now, there's now a gap again all the way around. Um, it's not exactly how I had it before I took it off, but it's really close. I mean, maybe a uh, maybe half inch difference, if that, maybe a quarter inch. Um, you can't even notice, so I'm pretty happy. And it gave me more meat to bite on as far as, as, far as um, down on the bottom side there more material to weld to so that's good um yeah next thing we need to do is um i already put nitrogen in the rear struts the proper way which the proper way being uh using the the lift to lift this thing up so we'll do that we'll lift the back up a little bit so there's no pressure on the struts We'll put in a little bit of air. I got four inches of chrome shown on the front. Might do three to four on the rear. Yeah, probably. You can see it's got a rake to it right now. Um, and you want some chrome showing, obviously, anyway. So let's do that. kind of did through some stuff back in the interior the dash and whatnot but uh I get all that crap put back in but let's take a look at this because it's one thing seeing everything apart building it you know whatever but once it's all together at ride height it's just boom it's a lot of hours um a lot of learning, a lot of borderline fucking crying, but, um, oh yeah, the tailgate does not stay open right now, or stay closed, you gotta build a latch system, probably won't run it for a while, but just, man, I had a vision, um, and I made it happen, I had an idea in my head, we set goals, knocked them off and the end result which is not completely done yet and it looks unfinished obviously but yeah it's just too bad 
really happy with those Tennessee gussets. So thank you, Bill, at YJ Bill. <laughs> um, but that's probably gonna be it for this video. Uh, it's probably getting pretty long. I don't know, I haven't started making this video yet. But what I am gonna do, what I probably shouldn't do, but I'm gonna do it anyway, is I'm gonna jump in this thing and take it down the road and go for a drive, go check the mail.